Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. We've got a packed show today. Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. This is Undisputed. (laughs) But obviously, I am not Joy Taylor. (laughs) Joy Taylor, as tough as she is, is fighting a stomach bug this morning. And for now, the stomach bug is winning. (laughs) Get well soon, Joy Taylor. No, I know what you're really doing. You went to the doctor to get that hate out your heart. Ah. <laughs> hope you're feeling better soon, ah. though, Joy. <laughs> I hope How you so. doing today, Skip? How are you, Mr. Sharp? Yeah. I'm Skip Bayless, as most people know, and everybody knows the Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp, the biggest self-promoter in the history of sports. How are you? I'm number two behind Tom Brady now. Uh, but that's not... You know what? Touche. Uh. <laughs> you, you might have me on that. So the show must go on because Correct. last night, Mr. Sharp, turned into one of the wildest nights in recent sports memory. Yep. Because not only did we have, obviously, Kevin Love broken hand, we had James Harden broken record with yep. the first ever 60-point triple-double. Correct. But the biggest bombshell of the night was dropped reportedly in Washington. Mm-hmm. The Washington Redskins have traded Kendall Fuller, reportedly, in a third-round pick. For Alex Smith? Wow. And in Kansas City, that means that Andy Reid is now going all in on Patrick Mahomes. And obviously, Andy traded all the way from 27 up to 10 to take young Patrick Mahomes. We had him on the show here on Undisputed last year ahead of the draft. Great kid. We'll see. He's under huge expectations and fire now. But double wow. And so we've got two questions to answer. Mm -hmm. The first question is, was it a good move for the Redskins? And in a moment, we'll get to best fit for Kirk Cousins. But what do you think about the Redskins deal? I don't think it's it's a a great move or even a good move for Washington. Hmm. Because I believe all you've done, Skip, is that you're on the market for a new car. And all you did was get an older version of the car that you had. It's hard for me to believe at, at the best, at the absolute best, all Washington did was a lateral move. It's hard for me to believe that Alex Smith is better than Kirk Cousins. What we've seen from Alex Smith throughout his career, when he has a sound running game and he's not the dependent guy that you don't need him to drop back and throw the ball uh, a a, a lot of times, he can play well. You look at him this year. When uh, Kareem Hunt rushed for 90 or more yards, he was 7-0. When that didn't happen, he was 2-6. We saw they get up to this great start because Kareem Hunt was having a historic pace as far as rushing and receiving the football. He dipped in his, his production dip during the middle of the season. They nosedive. He picked back up. They picked back up. Kareem Hunt end up leading the, uh, uh, the NFL in rushing. What we saw with Alex Smith in San Francisco, Skip, when Frank Gore was running the football, they were a very good team. Alex Smith played well. You say that about every quarterback. No. Uh, Aaron Rodgers didn't need it. Tom Brady doesn't have it. Drew Brees doesn't have it. Skip, but this is what I don't understand with this move, though. You're saying the 29-year-old, you could have had Alex Smith, Skip, for about 60, 65 million. Mm-hmm. Two years ago, three years ago, now this, this would have been a bargain deal because mm-hmm. you just gave Alex Smith. They were going to release Alex Smith. There's mm-hmm. no way. They saved $17 million. And yep. You only bidding against yourself because everybody knows they're gonna they're gonna release him. You don't move up 17 spots to take a guy at that position and then have him sit for two years. He played well. You you saw enough the last game of the season in mm-hmm. Denver. You're like, you know what? Patrick Mahomes is ready to play. Skip, I don't like this move. I don't know what Kirk Cousins did to Daniel Snyder or, 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 or Bruce Allen. But this doesn't make sense to me. You wouldn't give Kirk Cousins a $65 million guarantee, $100 million, basically a $20 million a year on a five-year deal. But you just gave Alex Smith, who had turned 34 in about five or six months, 71 guaranteed? Skip, this makes no sense to me. But mm. it's Washington. It explains a lot. They have had their problems picking quarterbacks in the past. They had their problem with Donovan McNabb. That did not work out. No. They traded uh, the sun and the moon to trade up for RG3, and it really worked out for one year, yes. and then it didn't work out as an all-time collapse bust after that. Correct. I'm going to speak first to you, Mr. Sharp, mm-hmm. as a longtime Cowboy fan, a lifelong Cowboy fan. I fear Alex Smith much more than I fear Kirk Cousins, or as his GM called him, Kurt Cousins. Mm. The reason I fear Alex Smith is he's a much better Kirk Cousins, and he has rounded into an all-around quarterback later in his life. The longer he's played, the better he's gotten. 
And I got to tell you, these last two years, albeit under Andy Reid's tutelage and guidance and play calling, he made the Pro Bowl two straight years. Kirk Cousins made any Pro Bowls? No. Right. Huh? I think he made a couple. Like, he made a few. Okay, but, but again, is, is, he, is he that guy? Is, is, he, is he a franchise, face of the franchise quarterback? And, and again, Alex Smith has a stigma on him, but the more I look, the better it gets at Alex Smith because this year he set career highs in passing yards, touchdowns, yards per attempt, and here's the key. He led the National Football League with nine 50-plus yard completions. That's extraordinary because the guy you've called check down Alex is bombs away Alex now. Yeah, but he's throwing the ball to Tyreek Hill for five yards and Tyreek Hill's racing Sometimes and sometimes they're bombs. And then, then Travis Kelsey. Okay, but Travis Kelsey, and by the way, if Travis Kelsey hadn't got hurt in the second quarter of the playoff game in Kansas City against Tennessee, I'm pretty sure Alex Smith would have gotten to go back to the scene of his quote-unquote crime on opening Thursday night. Yes. Did he not throw a party on Tom Brady up there? He, he did. And he was the best player on the field that night. No, he wasn't. Yeah, Kareem he Hunt was. was. Oh, remember what on. Kareem Hunt did? Yeah, but did you remember what Alex Smith did? you remember some of those deep throws? Yeah, he, th he threw the ball. Ooh. Remember Kareem Hunt runs that seam route? Because Tar Gurley sat here yesterday and said, hey, I mm. saw Kareem Hunt, and he told the coach, you need to put that right in for me. Okay, I got you. I mean, he's, he had some new toys, some new weapons. But if I look back at his five seasons in Kansas City, he has the third best touchdown to interception ratio in football next to just below Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. He's 102 touchdown passes to 33 interceptions under Andy Reid. That'll get it done. That's yes. pretty good. That means also that he had the third most wins over the last five seasons to Tom Brady and Russell Wilson. Right. Okay, that'll get it done. And if I look at his starting record, and again, he was the first pick in the draft, and you kept looking for more, and there was less. Right. But his starting record, Alex Smith in National Football League, is 88-62-1. Kirk Cousins is 26-30-1. So he's four games under 500, and the other guy's 26 games over 500. Well, what's not to like? I'm not saying to love about it, but what's not to like? I mean, you, you need to respect this man more than – that he gets. I, I think the thing is for me, Skip, is that you, are you telling me that Washington has surrounded Kirk Cousins with the same amount of talent that what he had in San Francisco and what he had in Kansas City? No, it has not. We knew this year. Jordan Reed, his best receiver, been hurt the whole year, and that's pretty much been the last three or four years for Jordan Reed. He's a phenomenal. He's a Pro Bowl, all pro uh, uh, talent at that position, but he's Nick. We saw Kirk Cousins take the Washington team to Seattle without four starting offensive linemen and two receivers and win a game. He's never had a running game, 20th, 21st, 28th. That's what his running game is. Kareem Hunt, they're a top five running team. When he has a top... but they were winning a lot of games before Kareem Hunt got there. Yeah, but winning, winning a lot of games doing nothing. Think about it, Skip. What, Alex Smith, whose fortune has he changed? No one, Skip. Okay. It's hard for me to believe that he's an upgrade over Kirk Cousins. I just don't see it. So, to me, I've always said about Alex Smith, he's an underappreciated underachiever because he was the first overall pick. And right. you keep saying, oh, well, show me something. Show me big. Show me Aaron Rodgers' ass. No, no, no. It was Aaron Rodgers' draft right. where Aaron went down at the 22nd. 20, yeah, 24th or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And Alex goes one and... Jim Harbaugh replaced Alex Smith in midstream and midseason with right. Colin Kaepernick and Super Bowl happened. Right. So, again, I, I think he's achieved more than you give him credit for. But I've said this from the start about Kirk Cousins, and I will stick by this, and you will learn to eat these words at some point. Mm -hmm. Kirk Cousins is an underconfident overachiever who was drafted in the fourth round and is never quite sure of himself. And as a fandom, you can't be sure of him because he will take you to the threshold and he will leave you at the altar. When you just think you can trust him, you can't trust him. And to me, his signature play of his time in Washington was the went to church play. It's last year against the Cowboys in Washington. Mm -hmm. And they're up 23 to 20, Redskins are, driving. And he's throwing into his end zone. And he throws to Barry Church of the Dallas Cowboys. And Dak takes it the other way, 80 yards. And the Cowboys win 27 to 23. You have to close that deal. So guess what? Kirk Cousins against some not very good Cowboy teams. But overall, he winds up 1-6 and six against Dallas. 
That includes four home losses to the arch rival Dallas Cowboys, and you're telling me that somebody's going to pay him whatever it is, thirty-five million dollars to be their their well, franchise he's savior. He's going to get one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty okay. million, about eighty-five, ninety million plus million dollars because he's free. But here's the thing, Skip. Now we've seen Alex Smith in two locations, and we've seen two head coaches say, "You know what? In order to get to where we need to be, we need to be without Alex Smith." We saw it in San Francisco because Jim Harbaugh made the switch to Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. Now we just saw. Andy Reid trade up 17 spots yep. and basically say, in order for us to get to where we need to go, Alex Smith is not the guy. He thinks there's a higher ceiling with a Patrick Mahomes. Okay, that's twice now. How many times do you need to see this, Skip? Okay, how many times do you need to see Kirk Cousins? What, what have you seen? What do you love? 26 I, I, and 30. I want, I want them to give him. So are you telling me that Washington, offensive talent, is as good as Kansas City's? Is that what you're telling me? No, not quite. But they had they had some players. But now, if they stay, yeah. if they would have stayed healthy, yeah. Jordan Reed can play. Yeah. But what the, what Washington did, they kept betting against themselves. They kept betting that Kirk Cousins was going to fail, and so you have to give him twenty million. You have to give him twenty four million, and that's against your cap. And but so la you, last spring they offered him fifty three guaranteed for the next two years, and he rejected and it. And they just gave they just gave Alex Smith seventy one. Yeah. All right. So he was right to reject it. Okay, is Alex Smith Tom Brady? Obviously no. he's not. Is he Aaron Rodgers? No. no, he's not. And you could throw in Ben Roethlisberger and Drew Brees, but there's a second echelon of pretty good quarterbacks, and Alex Smith is in that, and then there's a third echelon of never quite trust, and that's That's Alex Cousins. Smith. No. Because he's in that next group. Because you got he's the not going to throw in a So he's not in the group with Russell Wilson. He's not in there with Cam. He's not in there with Carson Wentz. He's not in that group, Skip. You got to come on down. Is he Matthew Stafford? No, you got to come on down, Skip. So I'm reading an ESPN.com. John Kime, who does an excellent job of covering the Redskins, but he's writing his piece, his analysis of this deal, as if, my goodness, I'm paraphrasing, but this is the thrust, the Redskins had to give up too much to get Alex Smith. So, Kendall Fuller is the only player involved here yes. in a third rounder, reportedly. Yes. Kendall Fuller, I, I don't know how many Redskin games I watched last year, at least 10 mm -hmm. full Redskin games. Mm -hmm. I go off eye test. What do I always tell you about watching games? Does so and so leap off the screen mm -hmm. where I say, whew, boy, that right. Kendall Fuller's a player? I know he's a nice player. Right. Third round pick, Virginia Tech. I get that. Yeah. He's got two brothers playing from Chicago and uh, New Orleans. Really? Okay, I get that. Good football family. Did he ever leap off the screen where you said, that kid to Fuller, he's, he's turned into one of the best lockdown corners in the league? Well, he's one of the top slot corners, and now you're going to get an opportunity to pair him with a, a Peter. Is he a game changer? Is he a difference maker? Look, quarterbacks, as we always talk about, everybody's looking for them. Now everybody's trying to decide, is it Baker Mayfield? Is it Darnold? Is, is it Josh Allen? Is it Josh Rosen? You know, like you're, you're trying to, eh, which one is which? And you know they're going to swing and miss on probably three out of those four kids. But skip, here's the thing. Washington was betting against the, they're, they're, they're betting against themselves. Here's a guy. Alex Smith is not going to be on the Chiefs roster. 17 million. So I get, let me get this right. You, well, you don't know that for a fact. I'm I mean, not, you, skip, you it, get the it, third rounder and a player. Okay, but, Alex but, what, Smith. but that's a steal. Seriously, that is a steal for a quarterback to give up a slot corner and a third round pick. And by the way, you're going to get back a third round pick in Complete. compensation for Kirk Cousins. In 2019. So it's, it's kind of a wash, but kind of a wash. And, and again, Kendall Fuller, it's a quarterback. Cornerback for quarterback. Hold on, skip. I'll do that. I'll you, do it any skip, day. But here's the thing. Look at look at his numbers compared to Cousins. Cousins back to back. What what three uh, a straight four thousand yard seasons. Thirty touchdowns. You keep talking about his. He had a career high in twenty three touch. What what did he throw for? Twenty six and five. I think. Mm. Kirk Cousins been over those, those numbers twice. Mm. All I know is he went one and six against my team, and I never feared him, and I've never wavered in my opinion to you on this show. I don't. I don't like him, don't trust him, and I am I'm devastated this morning that they didn't sign him for five. What did I keep telling you? Mm -hmm. I need five more years of Kirk Cousins. I need ten more games against Kirk Cousins. God help him if he stays healthy that long. But you but you're talking about Alex, check down Alex, like he's about to change the force. He's move. bombs away, Alex. He's a different guy now. And by the way, one guy is really mobile and can just gash you with his legs, and the other guy is not mobile and can be kind of a scarecrow falling apart in the pocket in Kirk Cousins. Well, you love that? Drew, Drew Brees is not mobile. Tom Brady is not mobile. You don't need to be mobile. Like Tom Brady says, he needs to be 
pliability. Mm -hmm. He needs to be flexible. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady ain't ready for You know what? Free. Alex Smith reminds me a little bit of Tom Brady and how he keeps himself fit. I don't know if he does pliability and Pilates and all that. Most, court, I mean, but, most but quarterbacks are fit, Skip. He, he's going on 34. I think he's just entered his prime. And he ran for six yards a carry last year. Yeah. He's dangerous. He can run. Like, he's underrated dangerous. He did lose mm -hmm. at home up 18 to Marcus Mariota. That happened on his watch, Skip he Bayless. He did lose his best receiver in Travis Kelsey. But if you're telling me now, if you're telling me check down Alex is that guy, he's got delivered Kansas City from evil. I just, I'm just telling you he is better than Kirk Cousins. I disagree. I disagree because you're up 18. Skip, do you forget what happened in, in, in Indy? When they had the 20-plus point lead, do you forget that? That happened on his watch. It did, but they were decimated by injuries oh. that day on both sides. They lost every running back. They lost both edge rushers on defense. Do you remember that? If he's that guy, he got to bring us home. You got. I gave you. I gave you a hundred. I gave you a hundred-yard mm -hmm. lead in a 200-yard race. You got. Okay. To, you got to limp it home. So what just happened in Kansas City is that Andy Reid's got a big ego, and he just put it on the table for all to see, and he said. This kid from Texas Tech, I know he's a rambling gambler because he is the flip side of Alex Smith. Yes. Maybe his upside is a little greater. He's the flip side of anything Andy's ever had. That's correct. So Andy Other Reed, than Brett Favre. You, correct. Yeah, there's some Brett Favre <laughs> yeah. going on. But, but again, Andy Reid likes to be able to control, as, as in Alex is kind of his extension on the field. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes is extension of nobody but Patrick Mahomes. He's a big arm plunger who will try anything at any time. He can make magic, or he can make you sit back and say, "What are you thinking?" So you're looking at like Andy saying, "Okay, I, I believe in this guy." I'm looking at Andy saying, I, I, "Alex Smith is taking as far as we can go. This, okay. this is far as this right, car is going to go." But you you better hide your eyes in Kansas City because interceptions will get thrown. Maybe a bunch of touchdown passes will get thrown. I'm going to root for this kid because he's a great kid. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be hard for me to root for Kirk Cousins, especially if he winds up with your Broncos, which I think is a distinct possibility. So you tell me. Best fit is? Uh, I did Best fit for me, I think, was Jacksonville. Really? Because they, be. get, they get I, Allen not, Robinson back. They that. can run the football. Yep. They have Hearns. Yep. Then the second best pick for me, Skip? Arizona. It's a good one. Arizona. I, now, why aren't you going Denver? Denver, Denver I, well, you don't know. Emmanuel Sanders, it looks like they're going to move him. They got to pick up the option on DT, offensive line. Demarius Thomas. Yeah, Demarius Thomas. So, so, so I, the harder I look at Denver, and now it sounds like the secondary is starting to be broken up, yep. right? Tlaib's going to be on the block, right? Mm -hmm. it, it almost feels like the window has closed on the Broncos. It's well, close. Well, here's the thing. They're going to have to get a veteran quarterback because – I do not believe with the way this team is constructed, Skip, that you're going to come in with a first-year guy and all of a sudden say, you know what, we, we're going to be playoff contenders. Everything has to go well. They have to go get someone that's a proven commodity to get them back because the Bron it's not good enough to win the division, Skip. They've done that. Listen, it's about the Kirk Cousins, I have observed closely over the years, does not want great expectations heaped on his shoulder pads. And if he goes to Denver... It's John Elway and Peyton Manning's ghost that you got to live up to, right? You make, you make $100 million. Oh, you got expectations whether you okay. want well, them or Whether not. you like it or not. But, again, I like your Jacksonville idea, although they have said publicly they're still committed to go forward with Blake Bortles. Is that why they took a knee with 55 seconds on the 25-yard line so, with two timeouts? He just had wrist surgery on his right wrist. I didn't even know it was bothering him that much. But I, I, he still had a pretty good year. Yeah. So I'm not going to be surprised if they do stick with him. The, the Vikings situation is interesting because they have three quarterbacks and they have none right, right now. Correct. So that's a possibility. But that defense got torched by Nick Foles, 38-7. Mm -hmm. to seven. I like Arizona as a possibility. I'm not going to rule out for Kirk Cousins the Browns because, to, to me, his underconfident, yeah. overachiever mentality fits with the Browns, where if they would give him that whatever oh, that they, money they is, have, they have the they've ability got the to, money, yes. I could see him saying, I'm going to commit to grow with the Browns. Then some of the pressure would be off. Well, if you if you want to win right now, if Jimmy Haslam says, look here, you, you need to win, well, they need to go get a veteran quarterback. You're not going to win right now with that team with a rookie quarterback, Josh mm -hmm. Allen, Darnold, whomever the quarterback you may choose in the first round. I would go get Kirk. I would get a veteran quarterback. Seems to be Kirk's going to be one of the only ones on the market, especially one that could probably that's been playoff experience, that's been a starter in this league. Mm -hmm. So for me, Kirk Cousins would look good, would work well for Cleveland. But uh, he's not going to have to wait very long to get that big payday. Mm.
By the way, we have two producers in our control room right now who I think are sitting back saying, what about the Jets? So, Shannon, what about the Jets? Well, th that's a, a very good possibility. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, does he take a little less money and go to the best fit, mm -hmm. or does he take max money and go and says, I, I just want the money, and uh, we, I can make it work? Mm. Because I believe Jacksonville and a few of these other teams might be better options than some of the teams that can might offer him the most money. But throwing the ball to Josh Gordon wouldn't be a bad idea. No. You know what? My gut feeling is he'll wind up with the Browns. I, I got a feeling. Big money, lower expectations. Josh Gordon. Again, Hugh Jackson's a great quarterback coach. He's yeah. a great guy to be around. Yes. Hugh, Hugh, Hugh knows some offense. And, and it's, it's time. One in 31 is not going to get it gun, done. Yep. I don't believe Hugh can have a similar type year. He's going to probably have to win seven, eight games mm -hmm. in order to keep this job. And that's not asking a bit much. You've had two years. They've cleaned out Sashi Brown and whomever mm -hmm. that was making all these picks, letting these quarterbacks get away because you could have had Carson Wentz. You could have had Deshaun Watson. Yep. You let those guys go. You okay, did. fine. But now it's time for you to step to the podium and say, you know what, guys? There's an expectation here. 5-11 is not going to get it done. 4-12. and 12. We need to be 500 in order to show some improvement to where we need to be and show my owner that we're heading in the right direction. No mercy. Hey, guys. Joy Taylor here with a quick word from Pro Flowers and Sherry's Berries. With Valentine's Day right around the corner, the last thing you want to do is pick the wrong gift. Making a big impression is key. Pro Flowers and Sherry's Berries have teamed up to help you really impress your Valentine this year with their perfectly paired collection. Go ahead and think inside the box this Valentine's Day. This really is a one-of-a-kind gift. Your flowers and dipped strawberries will arrive together in a beautiful, specially designed box that will keep your flowers fresh and your berries cold, guaranteed. Right now, Undisputed listeners can save 20% on any one of their perfectly paired combinations or any gift over $29 with promo code UNDISPUTED. And take it from me, these flowers are gorgeous and the dipped strawberries can't be beat. Pick the delivery date and it's guaranteed and customer satisfaction is always number one or your money back. There's only one way to get 20% off a perfectly paired gift over $29 featuring beautiful blooms from Pro Flowers and freshly dipped strawberries from Sherry's Berries. Visit proflowers.com today and enter code UNDISPUTED at checkout. That's proflowers.com, code UNDISPUTED, and you'll get 20% off this perfectly paired gift. Now let's get back to the show. No mercy. And we are joined now by one Keenan Allen, who just broke through and made his first Pro Bowl. And in my humble estimation, does not get nearly enough shine for what he does on the football field. He's a bad man. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. So welcome to Undisputed. We appreciate you being here, and a quick thought, because it was the news of the night, and you've been up close and personal with Alex Smith. Your thought on that Alex Smith trade to the Washington yeah. Redskins? Uh, surprising, yeah. yeah. Just with him, uh, Pro Bowl weekend, yeah. um, definitely surprising. Uh, I don't, he wasn't talking about it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if he knew or not or anything like that, but uh, yeah, definitely surprising, but should be good for him. You think so? I think so. Um, yeah. Same kind of quarterback as Kirk Cousins, I think, a little bit, a little bit more in age. Um, but I think he manages the game a little bit better than, than Kirk does, uh, mm -hmm. still with the age. And um, I think he, he does. He was throwing a little longer. He was there. Think about what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar quarterback to he Kirk is. Cousins. Mm -hmm. Maybe Look, he's saying he's a little better, Kirk. No, Cousins. no, no, no. Yes. Little, little older in age. Well, that's a good thing. Basically, the same model car. You going in the market for a new car, mm -hmm. but you get the same car that you had, but it's older yeah. with more miles on it. That sounds a little better. Okay, but does he look like he's beat up and winding down in his career, Alex Smith? Um, no, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. It was a four-year extension, so I, mm -hmm. I feel like he can play that out. So yeah, right he's now. kind of Brady-esque in how he keeps himself. Oh, well, he man, is. Stop. <laughs> he is. Yeah, he just don't. Oh, I don't. I don't feel quite right. I'm yeah. a little queasy today. So. Well, now you don't have to deal with him a yeah. couple times a year, right? Right. That's true. So. What didn't happen to get you guys over the hump as a team this year? Because I was a big fan of yours. I thought yeah. you were going to break through and steal the AFC West, yeah, and you came um, close. And by the way, Alex Smith was the guy who stopped you from yeah, doing that. Tough guy, man. Like yeah. I said, he managed the game well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, we just got slow start. I think um, you're trying to figure 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 everything out, um, getting trying to get everybody the ball, um, which is fine. But um, you know, when it's time to win a game, I think we got to start getting our guys the ball, uh, which is what we started to do once. You know, everything settled down. So and, uh, you're once, saying once maybe winning. you didn't get the ball enough early on? <laughs> Skip. Maybe? Well, Skip. Yeah, yeah, it's Skip. Right. Skip. <laughs> Not what I just heard? Skip. That ain't, that ain't why. I, but, I mean. There's some truth yeah, to that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the yeah, way, your kickers cost you games definitely, the first couple Most definitely. Of um, yeah, that hurt. Yeah. Tim, tell us about Anthony Lynn. Anthony was a former teammate of mine. Mm -hmm. um, what type of coach is he? Uh, great coach, I think. Uh, I think he led us in the right way. 
Um, I just think early on, like I said, it took it took them too long uh, to get to get everybody uh, in the right places at the right time, uh, just to get us all going in the right direction. Um, but once we got there, man, we looked good. Mm. So I think you know going into this next year, I think he got us in the right. Mm -hmm. So quick bit of background on this young man. Greensboro, North Carolina, that area, right? Yes, sir. Five-star recruit. Bama wants him. Clemson wants him. Tennessee, every, everybody, Michigan, they all want him. But you're playing DB as well as receiver, right? I was, yeah, I was ranked as a DB. D, he's ranked top as a DB. And suddenly he chooses to go 3,000 miles away to Berkeley, California in Cal. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, my brother, uh, uh, quarterback. Uh, he was at the University of Buffalo with Turner Gill. Turner Gill transferred, I think he went to Kansas. Uh, so he transferred as well, and uh, he liked Jeff Tepper, so that's where we went. Um, Is that a good choice? Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't care where I went. I was going. I was probably going to be gone in three, so that's the way I was looking Ooh, at it. I like that. <laughs> that's I like that's that. how I was going. Well, this game is on Sunday. You have a very unique perspective because you played both teams. Exactly. Put up huge numbers against the Eagles: five for a buck, thirty-eight loss in Week Four, uh, four catches, sixty-one yards, and twenty-one thirteen loss in Week Eight. We hear all this talk about the New England Patriots and Tom Brady, and rightfully so, but how good is their defense? They're good. They're good. Um, their schemes, um, their discipline, I think, is the best in the league, for sure. Uh, hands down, I think, um, the way they game plan, uh, Patricia does an amazing job putting them boys in good, good position. Um, it's hard to pick them. It's hard to do all that. Uh, so you, get, you just got to be on your A game, and you got to make tough plays. Philly, how good is their defense? They're great as well. Um, I Fast, physical. Um, they they, they talk. Quarterback. Yeah, uh, that boy Graham. Whoo! <laughs> he game changer. Graham. Game changer. Really? I like him. Even more changer. than Fletcher Cox is a game changer. I ain't gonna say all that, but he he, <laughs> game, he, he game changer though. Okay. Yeah. So are you leaning Philly in the game? I think they can play with him, but uh, you know, twelve. 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 That's what I keep trying to tell him. But I you know, he might not. He might not play the thumb. Him. Oh, no, he, he might know, not he play. Playing, he playing. No, no, he's not no, where he's he needs to be. He's, he's, he's not where he needs <laughs> to be right now. now. Play. <laughs> oh, my bad, Skip. Yeah. So <laughs> let's talk about Keenan Allen. Mm -hmm. Again, you, you're a fantasy wonder, and you won a lot of people a lot of fantasy games and leagues, yet you don't yet get the shine of the top, you know, of a the Julio, Julio, the, the ABs, ABs yeah. the uh, uh, Odell Beckham yeah, Jr. You know, those guys. So how do you feel about that? What what can you do to change that? Or do you even care about all of the above? Um, I don't, I don't care about it. Um, I do know I'm, 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 I'm probably the best. I am the best in the league. Really? Ooh. No question. Um, I can do what those guys do, what they're doing. I'm doing it. Uh, you know, no question about it. It's just, um, I, as far as football, uh, you know, those guys are in a big, <laughs> media, you know, they get, we don't have a lot of games out there on TV like that. So as far as that, I feel like I mean, they get a lot more. I mean, you're now playing in Los Angeles. Well, now we are, yeah. yeah. So now it's, it's about winning. Once we win okay, those Okay, so games, you just said you're the best receiver in the league. Most definitely. Okay. And and why is that? What what do you do that's better than others? Uh, get open against anything. Um, and you, I don't see nobody covering me. Uh, no coverage. Uh, no two people covering no, you? No, no two people. <laughs> Phil, what, Phil, Phil, Phil's looking this way. How, how you know, you had the kidney in, injury. Mm -hmm. um, 2015, you was off to a roaring start. Yeah. 15 catches one week. You had two games where you're over 150 yards receiving in the first six weeks. You get the kidney, kidney injury. You're out for the season. You come back looking to have a bounce back year in 2016, the ACL, ACL injury. Mm -hmm. How much did the missing two years and, and Keenan Allen not being mentioned played into how people view you now? A big play. Um, you know, it looked like, you know, I don't want to put it on nobody, but it looked like Derrick Rose. Uh, just getting hurt, mm -hmm. getting hurt, getting hurt. But, you know, when I'm out there, you see the stats. You see what's mm -hmm. going on. And, um, you know, that's what I'm trying to be so consistent in. So what makes you, in your estimation, the best? Is it speed, quickness, savvy, route running, what? Uh, Heart? Uh, my, probably my smoothness, uh, mm. and just the way I play, uh, my style. Uh, it's a lot of swag into it. Uh, mm. it's, it's different. D uh, define smoothness. Smoothness, um, AI, Allen Iverson, just Ooh. to put it in perspective. Ooh, I like this. Uh, Watching you play, everything looks the same speed. You run in the goal route, it looks mm -hmm. the same. You run in the out route, it, you, you take off like you're running the goal and you fall off the table. Right. You run the, the, the bang, the skinny pose. Everything looks the same. So DBs can't get a tail on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. 
Some guys, they they going to dig in and run the go. Or some guys, they do a lot of dancing and they like, bro, you, you're not going deep. Yeah. You're not going to go deep looking at the quarterback. Okay, right. so I know, I know you're about to pull up. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it comes with reputation. Uh, obviously, um, me and Phil do it a lot. Um, I know where he wants me. I know where I have to get to. I know the timing that I have to get to it. And, um, you know, once I think you have an understanding of the game and seeing the coverage and seeing everything, you know when, when to do stuff, how to do stuff, and, um, you know, how to beat the guy in front of you. So, How much does it mean to you to play with a guy who, who could wind up in the Hall of Fame and Philip Rivers? D- just do you have a connection or rapport? Most, I think yeah. it has a great deal to yeah. do with yeah. the success that I'm having for sure. Phil, Phil, unbelievable quarterback, unbelievable leader. And, um, you know, the, the position that he puts us in as a team, you know, mm-hmm. is great. So. So what's the expectation for this year? You finished nine and seven. You barely missed the playoffs. What's the expectation of this LA Chargers team going into 2018? Uh, we, we, the first goal, we, we got to win the uh, division. Uh, we got to go win it. Um, you know, Alex just left. Right. <laughs> so hopefully we get, we got to take advantage of that mm-hmm. and uh, just just go pound that division, mm-hmm. win that, and uh, after that, once we get in the race, you know, I feel like we have a good. So, me being a Cowboy fan, i got to ask one last painful question because you just Cowboys. tore us apart on Thanksgiving. You had a feast on Thanksgiving yes, at yep. Jerry World. How <laughs> easy was that to pick that defense to pieces? Uh, easy is hard to say, Skip. Yeah. It's the NFL. Um, it's not easy. But uh, it's, it was fun. It was definitely fun. Uh, pitch and catch, for sure. Uh, pitch and catch. Pitch, <laughs> pitch and catch. Pitch and catch. <laughs> oh. Can pitch of corn. Catch, skip. I thought I was going to like you, but I, you know what? Do I think you just went a long way toward putting yourself a little more on the map. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, he knows what a number one receiver looks like. I think he does. I think he is that guy. You'd love to have him in Dallas, wouldn't you? Would I? <laughs> in place of 88, I'd take him any day. Come on. We appreciate you. Thank you Thanks, very man. much. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. No mercy. My hand, it's getting better. I mean, it's not quite where I want to be. Um... So I'm just trying to protect it the best way I can. Um, it's obviously a very important uh, part of my body for a quarterback. So I just want it to be as healthy as possible for, uh, for the game on Sunday. So uh, it's Under Armour just made it for me. It's a, it's a great glove. It's got a lot of recovery in it, and that's what I need this time. Welcome back, Joy Taylor. Oh, wait a minute. You're not Joy Taylor? I feel like the host oh, of the show right yeah. now. What do you got for us? It's Michael Vick. We're in the driver's seat. Joy Taylor, get well soon. She's a little under well, the weather, Joy. fighting that stomach bug. But I've been fighting this guy over an ongoing raging debate that we've had for a couple of weeks now. Yeah. And he is claiming that one Tom Brady is exaggerating and embellishing the severity of the laceration on his throwing hand, laying it on thick. Mm-hmm. You played a little quarterback in your day. Yeah. What is your take on this issue? Well, first of all, I will say this. Quarterbacks are tougher than you think. And whatever's going on with Tom Brady's hand, he's able to endure. Whatever he did against Jacksonville is exactly what he needs to do at this upcoming Super Bowl mm-hmm. in terms of preparation, uh, you know, the process of going through, uh, the healing, and, and whatever the docs are doing. This just adds to Tom Brady's legacy. You know he's a he's a oh, he's, yeah. he's just a heroic guy. He, I think you just you know we'll, it, it'll trap. be one of the headlines. Tom Brady goes into the game and yeah. goes twenty six for thirty eight, two hundred and ninety eight yards and three I, touchdowns. I like those numbers. I'll Possibly those. the same way he get, did against Jacksonville. So yeah. whatever he did against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and whatever has led to this point, and if it's a digression, uh, a regression mm-hmm. in, in the healing process, then it's a lot to be concerned about. Yeah. But. As of right now, I think this just adds the Tom Brady legacy. I think people are making a bigger deal than their hand mm. than what you know than what it, 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 might, it seems might, to be. My shoes brown, but that's not the real color. I've been t- <laughs> that's Tom Brady bull job. I've been stepping what, in. What happened to your socks? It's that only makes no Tom Brady better. But it's situations like this that only make Tom that only take makes Tom Brady better. He Bro, thrives in these type of situations. Just add that yeast. He loves the mm, mm. added drama. <laughs> ah! And it oh, makes him play harder. Look at Skip. Look at him get, get a close up with Skip. That's not what you wanted to hear from Michael, is it? That's not what you wanted right, to hear. Go ahead. You lay it on thick. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, Take yeah. your best yeah. shot. Oh, you're like, yeah, we bring Michael <laughs> in on this one. Michael <laughs> played the quarterback. With- well, I'm going to cross examine <laughs> this moment. Skip, it's not a big deal. Coach Belichick has already told you. It's not open heart surgery. Yeah, so let, so let me get this right. He come out there this time with isotoners on. Not the, not the <laughs> underarm, but he got on isotoners. Really, Skip? Are you sure they're isotoners? What they might have been Tom Ford gloves. Whatever but anyway, they were, they look smooth. Yeah, exactly. They look good. So, 
Now he wants to, oh, it's not where I want it to be. You just played 11 days ago with that thumb that was slid open three days prior to that. Are you admitting it was slid uh, open? Yeah, I okay. did. Did it require 12 stitches? You think that was hype? He probably could have got eight, but he wanted 12 because he yeah, was a teacher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, so let me, I just want to make sure I'm getting this correct because I'm not a doctor, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn, so I'm mm -hmm. going to play one right now. 11 days ago, you played. You threw for 290 yards, two touchdowns to advance to the Super Bowl. So now you're going to have 14 days later, and it's going to get even more healing. Oh, it's not quite where. Yeah. Now, Gronk said that. Gronk's in concussion protocol. Yeah. Gronk says, I feel better, but I'm not where I need to be, but hopefully I'll be better on Sunday. I got no problem with that. Yeah. Tom Brady, really, Tom? You, you about to do this? Is this what you want to do? He's in lacer laceration protocol, right? Well, you, you got... You, I would love to see this laceration and see what it looked like yeah, so we yeah, can yeah, I, the, be the judge on he was how bad it is. Yeah, yeah, I know you did. Hey, I'm that, defending Tom Brady just as a guy who can go out there and get it done by any means. And necessary. he don't need to add no yeast to this cake. And he... The hand will not affect him. If it was a wrist, a, a finger injury... Uh, you know, some type Shoulder, of dislocation. Elbow. Yeah. Yeah, Skip, I would really Vic, be concerned. If a quarterback is preparing for the AFC championship game against this Saxonville defense, the youngest, baddest defense in pro football. I agree. With two corners who can lock down. And that cornerback suffers a freak accident on Wednesday ahead of that game on Sunday, and he gets his hand caught. I don't know exactly, on, on Burkhead's helmet and yeah. probably bent the thumb back and it just split like a, like a receiver catching Freak a football, injury. like in the web. It yeah. just split. And they said blood went everywhere, as obviously it would. And there's a little freak what out, this, man. I was, I was concerned at that point. Did, it has, did his head spin all the way around? Okay. Did he go beat dude? <laughs> Come on. Michael Vick, to throw a football accurately, and this man's about as deadly accurate, especially yeah. under fires, you, you're going to find in the history of the game. If your thumb is wrong, if it's not, if it's got stitches in it and you can't quite grip the way you do before, or maybe your grip has changed a little bit, you think you might have to wear a glove for a couple of days and then you say, I can't wear a glove, I've never worn a glove, I'm just going to go with the stitches and a bandage, a bandage yeah. over against the football. Could that not get in your head a little bit? No, it, it definitely will get into your head because some people don't deal with pain the way others do. The right. threshold is not as high. I just think Tom Brady gunning for a sixth Super Bowl mm -hmm. won't let anything deter him. And I was concerned at first when I heard about it. I was like, okay, Jacksonville has one up. And then we get into the game and Tom Brady is throwing the ball fine. I'm like, okay, he's okay. Yeah. Uh, it, but, but still, I didn't... But, but he's not going to get any credit for being okay with 12 stitches but, in his throwing. The, but no, I think it, the I, story is not good enough. Tom Brady, it, the, the Patriots it's, in the eighth Super it's Bowl. It's pretty great. Tom, Tom yeah. Brady in his eighth mm. Super Bowl. Mm. Tom Brady with a chance to win six, win five MVPs. But even that being said, mm -hmm. why would he put the doubt in his teammates' mind? Like you tell me, why would he put that out there? Why would he put that out there? That Tom is not where he needs to be? Oh, my goodness, guys, Tom is not where he needs to be. I think he's be. trying to lure the Eagles into yeah, a trap. exactly. That's what it sounds like. What quarterback going for his sixth Super Bowl ring has a coach who is attacking him? He didn't with attack the, him. Yes, he did. He just said it's not open heart surgery. That's a complete no, shot at the not. greatest quarterback no. ever. And then he said that it's not a football crisis. It's a media circus, not a football. Yeah. You don't think yeah. it's a football crisis nope. when your quarterback splits his thumb open before the championship? But you want to make it seem like Tom Brady got up off his deathbed, got out there Sunday morning, that. and led a victory and going to the Super Bowl. It's your throwing hand, for God's sake. He just threw for 290 Yeah, because he Saxonville. sucked it up and it worked. Okay, so it might he'll not do it work. again. And he will do it again oh, it's not where it, It's not where it needs to be. Okay, he said he was... A little stress going into the game. Amendola said he was really stressed because you don't know if the stitches are going to split. What if it starts bleeding? Okay, okay, what if you got sticky blood up against yeah, the if football? If I was Amendola, I would be concerned too. Yeah, Who's exactly. backing Tom up? Brian Hoyer? Brian Hoyer. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, see, I would be concerned Thank as you. well. But here's, the thing, but here's the thing, though, Skip. Okay, you pass that test with flying colors and you're playing outside. Now you're indoors mm -hmm. in a controlled environment. All right. But, oh, it's not where it needs to be. Ooh. Okay, so he goes to the big media session on Monday night, and he wears two gloves. But he knows, because he's been through it a couple times before, hasn't he? Yeah. He knows he's going to have to shake a whole bunch of hands. So he's got 
the two gloves on because he's got a right glove on to yeah. protect. He's dapping everybody up. He ain't shaking no hands. He's doing like giving the pound. He shook pound. everybody's he hand. He had, to, he had to stand up on stage. I watched it. He had the, they had the four, like, I guess they're captains and the four captains yeah. of yeah. the Eagles. And you have to go across and shake all the four hands plus the coach's hands. If I make four, okay. I'll squeeze it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, so what's wrong with wearing a glove then? Well, well, seriously. And he's now, with both. With, okay, and what, what, what do we just talk about? Alex Guerrero, it's cult-like. So Alex Guerrero clearly has talked Tom Brady into some glove. I don't know if it's some Under Armour, if it's a recovery glove. And Tom is convinced if he wears this glove all week, it will only speed the healing process. That's an isotoner. Okay, well, whatever it is, I don't know where it came from, but he says it works. So what do I tell you? If, if Tom Macy's. Brady believes what Alex Guerrero is saying is true, that's all I care yeah. about. It no. might be complete fiction, but if Tom Brady believes it's working, good for him. He needed that yeah. hat, too, that was on his head, indoors. Why are you wearing a skull cap indoors, Skip? He also wore a big wide brim cap. Yeah, exactly. Whatever I don't he, know. Maybe whatever it is, he better have some neosporin on that cut, and it better mm -hmm. be healing fast. But maybe he's coming out of a shell a little bit after and all these years. To, yeah, does, does he Tom. not deserve to have a little acclaim, a little attention? He would, yes. Mike, isn't the That's story, what it is, attention. It, thank you. Isn't the story enough? We got a 40-year-old quarterback that's going to win his third MVP yeah. that's playing in his eighth Super Bowl with a chance to win his sixth. Hold on, Shane. Mm -hmm. You said that's going to win his third MVP? No, MVP of the oh, regular okay. season. Oh, of the regular, regular season. season. Yeah, gotcha, yeah. Gotcha. he's going to win his third MVP. And I'm like, isn't that enough? No, I got to add some use to the story because yeah. I need it to grow yeah. or cut. It's not cut. I'm really worried. Did I'm it happen? 11 For days a while, ago. you were acting like he faked 11, the whole cut. 11 days ago. I really thought it was over with. And then he brought you know, it back up. Days ago, Michael he, Vick is ripping ago. Tom Brady. Ripped, I'm not ripping is. Tom. Tom's <laughs> my are. boy. Tom, no, I love him. You know, like I love, you know, other 31 quarterbacks in the National <laughs> Football League. <laughs> All right. But, you know, for this to surface right now, he it brought concerned it up. me. I'm glad we're having this discussion because I want to know if Tom Brady's 100% and we need he him 100%, is, he is 100 on, on Sunday to make this game competitive. Trying to, just trying to, trying to psych somebody out. It's not working. It's not working. But Fletcher Cox, you know. No mercy. Our next guest needs no introduction. We're talking about America's team. We're talking about Mr. Cowboy. We're talking about Jason Witten. And Jason, before I get to all of our good football questions, tell us what you're doing with Schwann's. Yeah, I partnered up with Schwann's, uh, offering the ultimate uh, meal package and, and uh, letting fans know that they'll deliver it anywhere to them. And uh, it's great in Dallas. We did an event there offering some underprivileged families uh, where Schwann's came in and donated a bunch of food to them. And so doing the same thing in Minneapolis for every new order. They're giving five dollars uh, to a food bank here in, in in Minneapolis. So great stuff going on. Good for you. And by the way, Jason's joining us obviously live from Minneapolis. And Jason, I want you to know that here recently on Undisputed, we've had Bryce Butler, we've had Orlando Scandrick in studio, sitting right over here in this chair. They have been very outspoken about what's going on and hasn't gone on with your Dallas Cowboys. So, give us your highly controversial inside insight into why you guys struggled last year. Well, it's a perfect fit, uh, Skip, because uh, you guys are one of the quieter shows out there. Yep, so we it's are. Great to be on yep. with you. Yep. I, I, uh, I, I tell you what, I can't go, I can't go anywhere, you know, do okay here and there and you're 16 and, you know, um, have a little bit of success, you know, can't do anything, can't swing a stick without somebody talking about Shannon and, and uh, talking all that trash, you know, so, uh, Look, he's one of those guys that I looked up to as I came into this league and admired the way he played. And uh, he was such a great player and ambassador for the position for now a young guy, back then a young guy for me to, to be able to watch. And I got so much tape on Shannon. Uh, you know, I can go for, for months looking at that tape. So, anyways. And by the way, just for those who are just joining us about this, <laughs> this has been going on for what now, a year or so? Yeah. And Shannon Sharp still believes with all his heart and the soles of his shoes that he could outrun Jason Witten right now as Shannon approaches age 50. Pity. In, in his street shoes, he says, which is obviously preposterous, but that's what Shannon thinks. So defend yourself, Shannon Sharp. Well, maybe not these street shoes and maybe not these uh, pants, because these pants I have on right now is like guitar strings. Mm. They're really tight. Mm. But, it, but I just do, I, I do, Jason. I, 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 I'm, that's not to diminish you. I just have the utmost confidence in me. <laughs> and, you know, in watching you uh, week in and week out, you, you move the change, you get the job done. But I think I can take you, Jason. I really do, honestly. 
your response. Well, you, you understand, Shannon. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes you guys forget, you know, if, uh, Shannon, it's not, he, he pretends as if he averaged like 19 yards a catch, you know, going down there the way he ran. But he had he had the, he mastered it. He's one of the guys I learned it from is playing this position. You know, oftentimes the guys across from you are faster and more athletic. So leverage top of the routes, you know, doing the different disguises. Yeah. He was so good off the line of scrimmage, getting separation. And so, you know, I just kind of stole that blueprint he created and tried to move the chains and try to win some of these games and hopefully compete for a championship one day. Mm. And by the way, Jason, you have now lasted one year longer in the National Football League than Shannon Sharp lasted. And and we hear, I think you're going to go onward and upward for at least one more year. What What's your game plan? How many more years? Yeah, I think when you get in this stage of your career, you just take it one year at a time. You know, I, I still feel like I can play this position at a high level. And even when you get older, there's the details of understanding your preparation. Some of the things I just talked about of leverage and how to run routes and understanding coverages, that all plays in, into your advantage. And so uh, I'm excited for this upcoming season. As I said, take it a year at a time. And uh, ultimately, we've got a lot to clean up and, and look forward to getting back at it. What do you have to clean up? Well, I just think as a whole, we didn't play as well. Offensively, uh, we didn't play to what our formula is. That's been a strength of ours. You look back in 2016, going 13-3, and three, our offense certainly we were able to lead the league in rushing. And I thought the, this year we were able to run the ball really well. But collectively, we weren't able to make enough big plays down the stretch offensively to give ourselves a chance to compete and score points. So we all got to evaluate it and look at ourselves get better at it and get back to the drawing board. And so that's what we're trying to do right now. And what in your estimation has gone wrong with a guy who has struggled mightily, especially last year in Des Bryant? Well, I think when your offense doesn't perform to the expectations uh, and the standard which you, you, you would hope for, uh, I think it's easy to kind of make blanket statements of the stat line. But quite frankly, when your offense doesn't do well and all of our stats are down, uh, not just Dez's. And so I believe Dez is an elite player. Uh, his ability to go high point the ball at the X position uh, is as good as there is in the National Football League. And so as Dak enters year three and he's proven to be a franchise quarterback and we all just continue to improve and do better uh, and work at our game, uh, that, that Dez can still play that position at an extremely high level. You mentioned that you would like to get back to making those big plays, but where are the players on the roster other than Zeke? I mean, at the Jason you can move the chains, but that wasn't our game. Our game was not going out and catching that 80 and 90 yard touchdown. Where are these big plays going to come in the passing game? Bryce Butler's a free agent. You know, you heard Jerry Jones, you heard Stephen Jones speak about Dez is making a lot of money, but the production is not matching up with the money. So where are these big plays going to come from? Well, I think that's when you go into the offseason, you evaluate that. But I certainly think Dez is one of those guys that can make those big time plays. I think Cole Beasley a year ago, He's one of the better slots in that position. Uh, you know, what his ability to create separation. Terrence Williams is a big threat for our offense. So uh, we believe we have a lot of weapons. I'm not disguising that. I mean, I think we didn't play well enough last year. We didn't have enough big plays that you're referencing. Um, and, and we didn't have the results. But I, I still believe we have the guys that can do that at, at a premier level. Some of those that I just mentioned between Williams and Beasley and certainly Dez that can really stretch the field and get those big plays that you're talking about. If you don't mind me asking, let's address the elephant in the room. How much did you guys miss Ezekiel Elliott? Well, yeah, I mean, Zeke is so good. I mean, his ability to run the football, not only as a, as a runner, but his ability outside the, as a receiver. I mean, you, th you think it's just a three-yard check down, and the guy turns it into a 12-yard run, you know, and that's a first down. I mean, he's a dynamic player. He was gone for six games. Uh, I, I would be the first to say you missed him. And, you, you know, you don't replace a guy like him, even though our runners, Alfred and Rod Smith, they played really well for us. I mean, but, but Zeke is so dynamic. And with our identity being in our run game, uh, I think that's, that's easily that, that we weren't, weren't able to play as well without him. But I, I think it's what you can't do is use that as a little bit of a default of, well, because he wasn't there, we didn't win. You know, and teams have injuries, they have suspensions and they're able to overcome it. I mean, Philadelphia's playing in this game Sunday. Their left tackle, who's perennial pro bowler, is not in there. It's an important position. And so the you have to be able to overcome those out. things. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, and look at that. And, 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 and so, uh, 
but and they've missed their 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 left tackle for a substantial amount of games this season. So and now with Carson going down too. So I, I just think we weren't able to do that uh, consistently enough. And, and it's it's hard when you lose a guy like Zeke, but certainly you still have to find ways to be able to make plays and win games. I mean, that's adversity is going to hit you. You know, you know that Shannon. Yep. You experienced it so much over the course of your career. We weren't able to make the plays, and uh, that's what we have to get better at. So Jason, I'm sold on Dak Prescott. My partner here, not so much. How much did you see that he regressed last year in Dak Prescott? Well, I think the result, the, the record wasn't the same. I mean, so th that that's, I think, what a lot of people point to. But I still think that he, he plays at a, at a high level. I mean, he's only in his second year. He doesn't turn the ball over. He's, a, he's an incredible competitor. Uh, he loves the game. He, he, he has all the intangibles as a leader how he works, prepares, studies. He has a great concept for the, for the game and, and understanding coverages. And he's just going to continue to play well. I think he would be the first to say that, as we all would, that uh, we know we got to play better. Uh, but I do think you can build your football team around him. I think he is a, is a dynamic player in person. And I think our core is really good. I like our football team. Big reason why I want to come back and be a part of it is because I like the men in that room. And uh, they're competitive. They love playing. And, um, you know, I think we can, we can compete. So... Ultimately, Dak's somebody that, that's a key position, and I, I think he has all the traits that you can build around. Get me fired up for next year. <laughs> so, by the way, speaking of those Eagles, Jason, you get to see him or have to see him twice a year. They're looking pretty strong right now. What shot are you giving them against Tom Brady and Bill Belichick? Well, I'm giving them a really good shot. Uh, I mean, obviously, Bill and Tom, they have the formula. I mean, they have the blueprint and how they work and prepare and great players and coaches. But I think with Philadelphia, what you don't realize is in this offense, with the RPO action that they got and what Doug's put in, it, they stay ahead of the chain so much. With the way they run it, and then they're able to kind of, it's a run to everybody, and then boom, it just becomes a little bit of a pop pass to the tight end. And they do it the same thing on the outside. And so I, I think if they're able to stay ahead of the chains the, the way this offense is built, that Doug Peterson's brought in, then they'll have a chance. I mean, their defense is really good. They got a number of pass rushers that get to the quarterback. The back end, you know, Jim Schwartz is under that Belichick tree, so he understands disguising coverages. Those guys understand it well. I mean, certainly it's Tom Brady and Gronkowski and a lot of big time players on the other side who've played and won these games a lot. So I think Philadelphia's got more chance than, than people are probably giving them credit for. Jason, we appreciate you and we look forward to seeing the Dallas Cowboys in this game <laughs> next year, right? <laughs> <laughs> we hope so. Appreciate hope you guys so. having me on. Thanks All for right. coming on with us, Thank you. No mercy. Eddie House is back in the house here yes, on I Undisputed. Am. Welcome back. Thank Howard. you. Thank you. I'm good. How you doing? Guess who is at it again on social media? LeBron James strikes again. And LaShannon Sharp, <laughs> could you please read what he just posted on Instagram? I don't want to read it verbatim, but... <laughs> Yeah. Why you do LeBron like this? Well, you do him like this. No, you do him. Well, do you All have he it? said, he says, when you become lazy, <laughs> when you are lazy, you become disrespectful to those who believe in you. Ooh, that's deep. Who are you talking to, Skill? That's cryptic. It ain't that's, cryptic. You yeah, know what he mean. He said some of y'all lunching. He, that's passive aggressive. Is it? And, and then so they, what does it mean? I don't know. Didn't they, they just had a team meeting, though, didn't they? Oh, did they? I'm saying they just had I a team meeting. I said I that meeting. It wasn't and even... they blame everything on Kevin Love, yeah, said it was here. And okay. I think it, it's, they have internal issues, obviously. We see Correct. that. Correct. And, and the problem is, is that the <laughs> internal problem is the guys that have the problem are the problem. The guys that aren't showing up, the guys that aren't. Because, I mean, Kevin Love, you got to look at Kevin Love is not, he was not the problem. He's the second best player on the team. For anybody to call him out in a team meeting when he's putting up these numbers like this, I mean, they, and when they're not doing their job, mm. I mean, they mad they, at you got to look yourself in the mirror and say, man, it, it, am I doing my job first before mm. I start pointing fingers? Uh, Teddy Bruschi says it best. Don't point your finger, point the thumb. Mm. Right. You know, and I think that's what a lot of these guys need to do. And, um, you know, LeBron calling them out right now. Uh, in front of every, he probably did it in the meeting, right? But this is for the world to see. Uh, and I think he's sick and tired of them being last in defense, top, they're bottom ten in every category. Yes. And they don't have any business. They have too much talent to be at that, to be at the bottom of every defensive statistical category. Even though they're older, pride should come <laughs> into play and say, you know what? I'm just not going to just let this guy go by me all night. Look, Stanley, Stanley Johnson, he was a lottery pick, so clearly he got talent. Skip, there's a the dude had a career high against you. Mm -hmm. I mean, and everybody in the starting lineup 
had basically 20, except Ish Smith, he had 19. Well, you don't see that very often. No. I mean, it's a layup line. Mm -hmm. Nobody can keep anybody in front of him. And then when you, you, know, you slide to help, he kicking the guy getting a layup or the guy getting a mid-range shot or three. And you know what? That's the problem. They're not, they're not showing help. They're reacting, and then they have to get back. And they're not playing for each other. That's the bottom line. Right. You know, you, first you play for yourself, family, but you have to actually play for your teammates. And they, don't, they look like they're not playing for each other. It, it's hard to keep a guy in front of you. Yeah. Everybody's talented. But when you get beat, there should be somebody there. And Pat Riley said it best. You have to help the helper that helped the helper. And they're not even on the first help. Yeah. Mm, and you played for Pat Riley. Yes, I did. Because it's simple, Skip. That ain't my man. My man didn't get beat. Right. <laughs> but you play for the Cavaliers. So he just got a bucket on the Cavaliers. So could you do me a favor? Could yeah. you read that one more time? I don't love I, it. I, I can't get it in my head exactly because it's so cryptic. It's, it's so, not cryptic. Yes, it is. He's I, saying if you're lazy. If you're lazy. You're being disrespectful okay. to the people that believe in you. I believed in you. Everybody that's on this roster except you, Isaiah, is, you're here because of me. Everybody that's on this roster, except you, Isaiah, you're here because of me. What about Jay Crowder? Yeah, yeah, he part of the trade. Okay. All that trade. So if you came as part of the package deal, the trade, other than that, D-Wade, Channing, J.R., Shum, Tristan, Kevin. Kyle. Kyle Corver. Okay, in the break, when you first showed me that cryptic post, yes. my first thought, I'm going to give LeBron a break here. My first thought was that he was doing the thumb like he was yeah. he was pointing to himself in yeah. the mirror yeah. as in he had been lazy last night that that wasn't lebron because to your point we talked about earlier mm -hmm. first half he was pretty engaged there, second right half there, oh there we go they, they had it up on the oh, okay all right second half he was just out of it man and in the fourth quarter he was really disengaged from the game i was embarrassed for him <laughs> That team has lost eight straight games, Detroit. Yeah. And that team is playing without Reggie Jackson to start with, but Tobias Harris, their best player, is now a clipper, and Blake is not there yeah. ready to go yet, right? Yep. So you're down three guys, effectively, mm -hmm. two for sure. And that happens to – you get blown off the floor in the fourth – you give up 36 points, yeah. and LeBron went 0 for 2 in the fourth quarter with three turnovers, and they were just careless, uninterested, I'm out of it kind of turnovers. Well, he's sure – I mean, I'm trying to give him a break here. Is he not maybe pointing the finger at himself? We never seemed to do that before, but I'm just asking. The one thing we know about LeBron, he's not lazy. Eddie, you play no, with him. He's, not. he's gonna put the time in on the court. He's gonna put the time in off the court to make sure he's ready, mentally, physically, and emotionally prepared. But Skip, that's not good enough. What they okay, last so you who's he calling? Who's he calling out? I, I want to know. I think the whole team. Yeah. I think everybody needs lazy. To, yeah. I Ty mean, Lou, everybody. You get lazy too, Tyloo. You getting fat over there now? <laughs> <laughs> you getting fat? Hey, Tyloo. Is, is that from you or from LeBron? That, 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 uh, hey, all I'm saying is we got to we hold everybody accountable. Mm -hmm. LeBron James camp, he holds everybody accountable. Hey, you know what? To hold the coach accountable, it's like when they fire J. Kidd. I think it, that's a, sometimes it's a raw deal. Right. Because the coach can give you a game plan. It's up to you, the players, to go out there implement it. and implement it. Correct. And also do it the right way. Right. And play hard and play for each other. When you stop playing for each other, then, I mean, and that's what you see. You see the, the, the one time where Jay Crowder steps over Kevin Love. You know, when Kevin Love's on the ground, he step, literally steps over, looks at him and steps over. That's, that tells me that there's internal problems because you play for your brother. As soon as you see him down, you run over yeah. and pick up. You look at all the teams mm -hmm. that, are, that are winning. They, they do that. If a guy falls down on the ground, you might have all four guys rushing to him trying to pick him up. And I'm going to push there's you out of the way. And if, if you're on the opposing team, I'm going to push you out of the way so I can get to him to hip him up. And by yeah. the way, the other night after we read, reportedly, that – Isaiah Thomas called out Kevin Love and that aforesaid Eddie. team. And that, he just got He there. called him out and he just got there? And see, that's, that's the problem, too. And not only that he just got there, I, I think it doesn't matter who calls you out, it's how you do it. Right. You know, because we're all here and we all want the best and we're trying to get where we're right. going. Well, if you haven't stepped out on the court, I think that's, you have to be, that's a slippery slope for you to start pointing fingers instantly when you haven't produced, you haven't even had a training camp. And I think that's another part of the process, uh, the reason why, they're, they're struggling. They're a veteran team, and, you know, when you come into training camp, you come in shape, but then you use training camp and the preseason to get in those game shapes because you right. can't simulate that. So what right. did Kevin do in the next game? He gets a rebound and leans exaggeratedly way down to hand the ball to little Isaiah like a little Christmas Because cause think about it. <laughs> you know? They have it going early on. Isaiah missed the first 30 games. They got their rotation. Okay, here come Isaiah comes back. 
They're trying to get a rotation. Now Kevin Love's gone. If you make a trade, even if you don't, Kevin Love come back. You got to try to find a rotation. He's going to be back, what, two weeks, three weeks before the playoff starts? Now you got to try to find a, a, a rotation that you're going to go to try to win four games with over the next two weeks. And look, they've been doing that all season. They, LeBron got hurt in training camp, yeah. so they weren't able to see what, what mix and match, what work, and they're doing this all on the fly right now. And but as you look at the standings, they're still third. They're still third, and you look below them, they're still going to make the playoffs. Struggling well, like yeah, they are, still going to make the playoffs. Well, I hope they're going to make the they're playoffs. They're going to make the playoffs. I don't see too many teams jumping in front of them, so but they'll be like three or four. Is that all you got to say for the Cleveland Cavaliers? I, no, that, that, that's a failure in itself right there. I mean, they, they weren't going to beat the Warriors anyway, especially the way they play. Are you now. off the bandwagon? You're talking no. like you're off. No, I, I'm not leaving Bron. Huh? Br- Bron, look here. We know what this man is capable of, Skip. I still hold, I'm still holding out hope that Dan Gilbert will make a move, make one of these old power moves, go get a DeAndre and Lou Williams. He's hey, but so if it. they do that, y'all going to give up that first-round pick, no. right? So basically, uh-huh. they, they're going ha- to have to. They're going to have to give He's that first-round pick. LeBron if you go, stay. You got you got, that's, re- that's the only way that they could pull that yep. off. You got to give up that first-round pick, and then the Clippers are starting to look good, and, you know, your boy might be out here next year. No, they ain't got enough pieces. Gallinari. So, you want LeBron to go play with Gallinari. No, they, gonna have a, they got a lot of capital. <sighs> Shannon Sharp, Sharp, I'm not going to let you off the hook. (laughs) If, in fact, LeBron's not pointing the finger at himself with this lazy shot that he took passive-aggressively, who's he calling out? Why why didn't he ever use names? Mm. Why why don't you ever put names in? Mm -mm. IT, you're lazy. I don't know. Kyle you Korver, do that. you're lazy. No. Why not? No, you can't do that. You can do anything you you want. You're LeBron James. In the media. You do that in the the media, yeah. And that's how Isaiah, if Isaiah had a problem with Kevin Love, he could have went to Kevin Love. He's like, Kev, what's up? He's like, I know that you know you weren't here this time, but I don't believe this is the first time that you left the arena. Mm. Address him like that, but you try to address this man because you got to realize Kevin Love is still a man. Although you might think, oh, well, I was second team All NBA and all this, and I'm no, 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 no. You well, just one, one thing we know: he, LeBron didn't taking a shot at Kevin Love because he just broke his hand, so yeah. he can't be lazy, I, right? I want to know who's leaking this information. Letting everybody know what happened in the team meeting. LeBron's camp. No, the team, LeBron ain't. Because the team camp. meeting is, is that something that's that's you know very sacred, p- sacred yeah. precious. There, you have yeah. that meeting. I mean, ain't nobody coming out telling you know. And you know, the coach is always going to ask, "Hey, was everything good in there? Yeah. Y'all, y'all okay?" You know, all we say is yes, mm. and we keep it pushing. Right. But mm. that should none of those things should ever come out. Yeah, like who leaked that information that Tom Brady hurt his thumb in, in practice? I don't know. Leak the information. You have to put on the injury <laughs> reserve yeah. report. They, they, it, it, it went on the injury report. Boston Globe got the story. Before he got to the injury report the next day. But that's neither here nor there. I've Le- had enough of LeBron, LeBron, LeBron James. LeBron James will work, work his way through this. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. We're back again tomorrow morning at 9.30 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one.